The title is The Tragic Death of Eleanor Marx, and it, the title poem comes from, strangely enough, some study I was doing into Flaubert and his novel Madame Bovary. During this study, I discovered that the first official English translation of Madame Bovary was made by Eleanor Marx, the daughter of Karl Marx, which I found interesting enough. And then I looked into it more and discovered that she died in a way very similar to the way that Emma Bovary dies in the novel. And this tied in with all this thought that I'd been having about the role of the translator and what a serious role it is and to what extent the text that they're translating might influence their life. And this was such a huge symbolic and real example of this that I found it very moving, very sad and a very powerful image. So the title poem came about where I started to slice together versions of, of the novel as if I was imagining the point at which Eleanor Marx decided or it occurred to her to imitate this suicide, this death so closely. And that's how that poem came about. But the other poems, you know, then, then came about in other ways. <laughs> The editorial process is really surprisingly, to me, physical in that I write for years. I mean, I was writing, say, it was four years since I published my last book and there's a period where I didn't write. I thought I'd never write again. So there's a few poems in there which are, are about that. And then it's you doing all this work and, and often it's with half an eye off the poems. Like you almost don't want to look at what you've been doing. You, you, you're worried that if you look at it, it will suddenly disappear. So I wouldn't consciously be thinking, how am I getting on? Is this looking like a book? It was always like a poem, a poem at a time. And then as it gets closer and you start to think, literally like in the last few months, this maybe is the book. I physically lay them all out on the floor. And that was a fast, that was part, that was a creative, moment in itself because I started to lay them out and poems that I thought went together didn't go together and then others that I never saw a link between suddenly I saw this link and I started to see themes in my writing that I didn't even know I was consciously writing and so I started to move them about again as I say like physically on the floor these A4 sheets of paper 60 of them or whatever laid out and uh, often that that would give rise to maybe a new poem or to an editing of a poem so things were even changing even at that point. I think that when I'm writing, I don't think of the reader. I, you, you get really immersed in the thing itself. And maybe it's easier to imagine a fiction writer or a playwright even when they're writing. Of course, you, this is to be performed as it were. This is to come alive. But at the time of writing, you just try and get into the truth of that thing that you're making. And then maybe maybe in the editorial, in the, in the cutting process, then you start to think about how it sounds. And certainly I had been reading more poems aloud. I was doing more poetry readings when I was writing this book. So some of the poems were definitely written with the, um, with the idea of reading them aloud and how people might enjoy listening to them or get into it a bit more if they, if they had a nicer sound to them, basically. So that was certainly part of it. But there is a point where I suppose that doesn't, that can't come into it, really.